So a question I've seen come up in regards to Atmos a few times is decorrelation. Does Dolby Atmos decorrelate audio? And the answer is no and yes. So today I want to sort of demonstrate and explore how some of this, well, not necessarily how it works, but when it happens. First of all, what what is correlated audio? What is decorrelated audio? Correlated audio is basically when we have the same signal coming from multiple places. Correlated audio is a big part of how we achieve a phantom center. We have the same signal in the left and the same signal in the right. The audio is correlated and it helps for us to kind of hear that phantom center. It's real important if a phantom center is even going to work. Decorrelated audio is, well, you know what? Let me just read, Sweet Sweetwater had a, a really good explanation of this. So let me just read it right off of their website. Decorrelation, a process in which an audio source signal is transformed into multiple output signals with waveforms that are different from each other, but which sound similar. Distributing these signals to different loudspeakers, such as a surround system, kind of like immersive, creates the sensation of space and helps listeners identify the location of sounds. In nature, decorrelation is a product of the delay, reverberation, and filtering properties of any room or space in the studio effects processors like reverb, delay, chorus, flanger, comb filter, etc. They produce decorrelated output. There's a long history of home and studio devices that stereoize monophonic signals, and they typically worked by decorrelating the output channels. Whether audio is correlated or decorrelated, it used to be something that we were concerned with in the stereo realm, because when we had a lot of decorrelated audio, if you folded it down to mono, a lot of times there could be potential phase cancellation and problems when you would fold down to mono. Now, that is still a potential issue with Atmos because Atmos is a scalable format because it's object-oriented. We want to be able to fold everything down into kind of smaller formats, basically, whether we're in a big movie theater or down to a home theater, sound bar, my laptop does Atmos out of the speakers, does some kind of spatial thing that Apple does. So whatever these formats are, we need to be able to fold it down to a smaller format. And in general, to fold things down, a lot of times we don't want decorrelated audio because of the phase problems. But how does correlated audio work in Atmos. The first place we should look is let's look at the binaural side of things. So what I have here, I've just got a test signal. Maybe I'll play it really low for you guys because it's just going to be pink noise and it, it might be obnoxious. So if it's not there, it's because I took it out because I don't want to drive you guys nuts. But to start with, I just got this panned all the way to the front right. Since it's binaural, we're really just looking at two channels. So I can just look at this insight meter and we're just gonna look at the polar. Now, if I pan this to the center, we can see that our audio is correlated between the two channels. If I pan it to the right, there's no correlation because there's no audio on the other side. Now, watch what happens when I flip over to the binaural. So right away, now we can see we have some audio that's not correlated, which is what we're seeing in here. And that's important. It's an important part of the binauralization process because we need decorrelated audio in the opposite side so that we localize the sound to where it's coming from, which in this case would be you know, towards the the front right of the room. So in headphones, listening to binaural, yes, there is definitely decorrelation that happens. But what about speakers? 
is there some kind of decorrelation process that happens when we start panning around the room in speakers? And the answer again is it depends. So what I've done is I've taken the 714 from the Dolby renderer and I've routed it back into Pro Tools. And then I have this nice little meter analysis suite from Nugent Audio. This is the Halo Vision. And what I have up here are their correlation meters. First up, there is this web matrix here. And then down here, we can kind of see the the actual matrix thing. This is a little confusing at first, but when it's yellow, there's nothing to correlate. So if you see yellow, there probably isn't even any signal right now, not sending signal anywhere. Up here with this web, when there is a decorrelation between two different channels, we will see a red line between those two channels. So just to kind of give you a little bit of an idea of how to read this thing. So to start with, let's, let's start in the bed just to begin with. So got our signal here. It's panned to top right. We're not going to see anything here at all because there's nothing to correlate. It's a single signal. What happens? Let's, let's bring this back a little bit into the room into what would basically be kind of the, the wide location. So when I bring this back in the bed, now we can see we have correlated audio here between the right side surround and the right speaker. So there's no decorrelation going on at all. If I bring this out into the space a little bit, again, we're seeing correlated audio anywhere that the audio is being sent to. And you can see the meters over here as to where audio is kind of showing up on things. So between the center and the right side surround, we're correlated between the center and the left side surround. It's correlated, like lots of correlated audio going on. This is in the bed though. What happens if we switch to an object? So I'll switch the routing over to an object. And again, correlated audio. Anywhere I move this, the audio stays correlated. Let's go into the height channels. Let's really put this in a place I probably wouldn't pan something to, but we can see correlated audio. There's no decorrelation that happens. So when does decorrelation start to happen? Well, it happens if we employ the size parameter while we're routed to an object. So watch what happens when I increase the size of this object. Right away, we start to see decorrelation happening. So all of those red lines, there's decorrelation. If I really crank it up, we can get a lot of decorrelation going on. Now, what if we do this in the bed? In the bed, everything stays correlated. Now, this is potentially problematic because as I've mentioned in a lot of other videos, depending on a listener's relative distance to each speaker, there will be some degree of phase interaction, destructive interference, comb filtering, phase cancellation of some sort. Because if you're not dead in that calibrated spot, you're going to be out of time from speakers and you're going to hear some phase problems and they may or may not be an issue and it may be an effect that you like. I I don't know. I I think it's not a good idea to bank on using that as an effect because how much of it happens is going to vary depending on where somebody is sitting. But if we flip over to an object again, now we have that decorrelation. And the decorrelation 
in speakers to me, it just makes things kind of feel a little more diffuse and it actually makes it hard to localize for me. But your mileage, as with anything, may vary. One thing I should mention in regards to the decorrelation that happens when we use this size parameter, that decorrelation in general is something that's going to take place on the consumer side of things. It's based on the metadata that is in the Atmos file. So it's not something we need to worry about as much when it comes to folding things down because the renderer on the consumer side, it will take care of all of that. So we shouldn't have to worry about it. Now, one place I'm not sure exactly how this works, though, is when it comes to something like clustering, which happens in the home formats of Atmos, even if you're listening to something that's like Dolby True HD. There is clustering involved in that. I'm not exactly sure how that works, though, with the size and the decorrelation. All I have to go by is the tools I have here right now. If you are from Dolby and you can explain that, or if you've talked to somebody at Dolby and you understand that, please throw it down in the comments because I would love to know how that works. There you go. That's how decorrelation works in Dolby Atmos. You got other things you want me to talk about, look at, explore. I don't have all the answers or get everything right. So, you know, this was, this was something that I had a good idea of how it works and doing some analysis confirmed what I was already thinking and learn something a little bit new with the, the size parameter on objects. So there you go. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.